Thank you, and we, we welcome you today to this Ash Wednesday service as we begin the journey into Lent. The yeah, opening hymn this morning is number 508, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was so weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water. Thirsty one stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus, and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, your morn shall rise, and all your day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I invite you now to a moment of silent prayer. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain from you the God of mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. <laughs> Our first reading is taken from the book of Joel, the second chapter, beginning to read at the first verse. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like darkness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping, and with mourning, rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the minister of the Lord, 
Weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Psalm 103, verses 8 to 18. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and of great kindness. He, he will, will not, not always, always accuse you, you nor will, will he keep, keep his, his anger, anger forever. forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. As for, for as the heavens are high, high above the earth, the earth so, so is his mercy great upon great those, those who fear, who fear him. him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As, as a father, father cares, cares for his, his children, children, so, so does, does the Lord, Lord care, care for, for those, those who fear him. him. For, he knows, for he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers mm, well. that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish, flourish like a like flower, flower of the, of the field. field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the but merciful, merciful goodness, goodness of the Lord, of the Lord endures forever, forever on those, those who, who fear him, him and, and his righteousness, righteousness on children's children. children. God of infinite mercy and forgiveness, by the cross and resurrection of Jesus your Son, wash away our sins and deliver us from our infirmities of body and spirit that we may live with him who has risen life to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. The second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 20b and 6 to 3. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have accept helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. For whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There is an Egyptian myth about a bird that regenerates itself. And it does it by actually bursting into flame and burning itself up. It carefully builds a nest, settles down into it, and poof, bursts into flame. From the ashes left by the flame, a beautiful reborn bird arises. According to the story, the phoenix is so beautiful that it is dedicated to the sun in Egyptian mythology. I heard that story when we first studied mythology in grade school. Back then, it was more than just a little bit scary. These days, I listen in a different way. I both acknowledge and am amazed at the this, this faith of the, the phoenix that it had in the whole process, process of creation and regeneration. The dying to self and the emergence of a renewed spirit within, to borrow a quote from Psalm 55, verse 10. Ash Wednesday is a day of avoidance for the majority of Christians. It's too solemn, too much of a guilt trip, a warning that there will be 40 more days of this lowly worm stuff. The truth is, though, that sooner or later, we all have to confront the weakness of human nature in general and our own in particular. We also are nudged to hold our mortality with open hands. None of this is intended as a call to wallow in self-pity. It is an acknowledgement that we have a spiritual identity, one that, like the phoenix, needs to regenerate, to become more beautiful and so much stronger. Ash Wednesday offers each of us a chance to die to our old self and to receive a new birth, to quote from the Ash Wednesday liturgy. 
That same liturgy reminds us to bring before God all the things that hold us back from understanding ourselves as created in God's own image. The fire of the phoenix, for us metaphorically speaking, is the ritual of the liturgy and the call to penitence. What we say and do here together means, offers a means for discarding the things that prevent us from feeling God's love and trusting in it. Sadly, because of the need to stay within the COVID-19 protocols for everyone's sake, I, in my role as presider in this liturgy, will not impose ashes on your foreheads. They will, however, be visible to us on the altar. At the appropriate time, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your, on your own or a family member's forehead with ashes or oil or water or just trace a cross with your thumb. The penitential prayers and the prayers of blessing associated with that rite remain in place. They are a reminder of the beauty of Ash Wednesday's liturgy and the love of God that sustains us always. Ash Wednesday calls us to, expect, to inspect our lives. We are to look at how we treat each other. We are called to consider how we care for God's creation. We are to look at how we, we show praise and thanksgiving to God. It's sort of a theological give, give credit where credit is due. And according to God, Jesus in God's, according to Jesus in today's gospel, we are to do all of this without a lot of fanfare and attention getting for our own presumed piety. Jesus talks about storing up treasures, and we all do it. Think bank accounts, the latest consumer goods and gadgets, and make a list. Ash Wednesday says instead, think about all hurts, anger, finger pointing, the inability to love each other and ourselves, or offer forgiveness for the hurt that follows. All of these behaviors give us a sense of importance and control, and it is frightening to let go of them. The invitation of Ash Wednesday is for us to fast from habits that cause hurt to others and prevent us from rising like the phoenix to a closer reality what God intends for each of us to become. On this day, we are encouraged to forgive ourselves, to forgive others, and in turn to accept God's forgiveness and love into our lives. With forgiveness comes the freedom to let go of all that negative stuff that we store in us. The purple of Lent is such a contrast to the gold and the white of Easter. Purple reminds us to look into ourselves, to listen to the voice of God calling us toward resurrection, to pick up the metaphor the Phoenix demonstrates real courage to allow the old stuff to be burned away and to let a new life in God emerge. The Phoenix knew and trusted that re regeneration meant dying to the old and embracing the new way of being. That, for Christians, is the paradox of the center of, of uh, baptism, our Ash Wednesday, Lent, and Easter itself. In order to live most fully, we are given the means to become new creations in Christ. A form of dying in order to live as God calls us to live, fully in, re engaged in a rich life one that is rich in joy and in compassion. I pray that on our Lenten pilgrimage, we find the joy of the restoration in God praying for. Thanks be to God.
Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal Mystery. We begin this holy season by remembering our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We begin our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes, an ancient sign, speaking of the frailty and uncertainty of human life and marking the penitence of the community as a whole. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe, observe a holy Lent by self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on the word of God. So let us kneel before our creator and redeemer. Let us say together Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, I my sin is ever before me. Again, you only, against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing your of your righteousness. O God of my salvation, open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled heart, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Please join me in the litany of penitence. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and earth that we have sinned our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have let undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, God. Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve the, as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, O Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our hunger and our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, like our faith to command, to command the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. 
Accept our repentance, Lord, for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our false judgments, for our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and your lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, from the dust of the earth you have created us. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence. I remind that only by your gracious gift that we give eternal life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory and glory. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us to the holy of saints to the joy of the resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Our offertory hymn is number 647. Let us pray. Merciful God, 
Turn us from sin to faithfulness. Accept our offering and prepare us to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ our Savior, who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer 1. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants, Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of, ble of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them, with all of your saints who have served you at every age, we give thanks and raise our voice to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God. Earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please sit, Ornia. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, "Take." and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming gain and glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one hope body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The body of Christ. Let us pray. God of compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you reconciled your people to yourself. Following his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and observe and serve one another in love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us to into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 655. Holy Spirit ever dwelling.
Let us depart in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen.